Sometimes video games can be but other times they just make you sit back and say, what the f***? Today, we're looking at the top 10 times a video game made my asshole explode. The 90s. Coca-Cola, Got Milk, and Ghostbuster were the coolest thing. Even Bill Cosby was cool in the 90s. Only 90 kids will remember. But video games were the best of all. Nothing beats the memories of finishing up a tough week of getting shoved into toilets every day at school to head out to the video store with your legally appointed caretaker to rent your favorite game. Video games can transport you to a magical fantasy world where those crazy enemies and difficult to land jumps can be so much fun you could forget to use the bathroom. But one game we all remember. Super Mario 64. That's right, Mario. Or, as he's known in Japan, Doki Doki Mega Man from the Biohazard series. This plucky little Italian plumber unclogged his way into our hearts with a plunger full of fun and a series that just wouldn't flush. Just like the time my stepdad had to unclog the toilet for me by reaching his whole arm inside it because I had lost the plunger playing Mario in the neighborhood with my friends. Even today, you still hear about Mario's legendary games like it was just yesterday when he starred in his very own series on Nintendo brand entertainment systems by Nintendo. In fact, this game was so popular that they even made several prequels and demakes on the N Entertainment S. Mario even got his own feature-length film, The Whizzler. Yes, Mario's popularity even led him to a brief foray into the field of health and nutrition with his Dr. Mario and Dr. Milk games, where he gave helpful advice to drink milk and take pills. Here's a fun trick we all know. If you blow milk in your Nintendo, come on Mario grows bigger and can jump higher. Now that's a game genie for your uncle that works at Nintendo. And don't forget, if you do the legendary kimono code at the start of Mario Milk, down, up, B plus, go, you get 50,000 points. Yes, Mario was a cultural phenomenon and special to us all. But even a character such as Mario wasn't without some of his own problematic gamer moments. This old Mario 64 commercial shows a bit of racism on the part of Nintendo and would be banned today. And rightfully so. You're not gonna stop me, you stupid ape! At one point, Mario was so popular, he even made Sega think twice. To put it in Harry Potter terms, Mario cast a movious over a spell on the blue bomber, Sega's hog. Mario's popularity was on a never ending roller coaster ride to fame. Ever since I was a little boy, I always Mario 64. This is the first game ever made. The Mario series started on N64 with this sequel to the SNES mini hit, Super Mario All-Star. This was a great introduction to the Mario series for the main character Mario. For the first time, Mario is in his very own world, which is why this game is called Mario World. I've always had this game ever since I was a child. For many, growing up with this game was just a part of our childhood. Mario 64 was a truly unique game. Prior to this, every other game used merely pathetic and childish weaponry such as guns. This wannabe macho, overly aggressive style of gameplay was the predominant style of game at the time. Pathetic, low brow, low IQ, muscle bound freaks beating on each other brainlessly? No thank you. But Mario changed all of that. Mario 64 pioneered an all new gameplay mechanic, jumping. 
That's right, Mario 64 was the first game ever made to feature jumping. With this unique, innovative new attack, gamers around the world could see their fantasies come true right before their very eyes. Mario's moves are souped up and improved from the previous Mario games. This was a tough decision for the developers, because this was the first Mario game in the series. In Mario 64, Mario can defeat or kill his enemies with Mario's new repertoire of moves, which include the Super Flip, the Downwards Bopper Thrust, and the Infantile Diaper Crawl. <laughs> Even the best classic games have their issues. One problem that most gamers will agree on is the notoriously poor control for Luigi. Luigi's controls oftentimes feel floaty and don't quite register right. Hideo Kojima has been repeatedly criticized for this, but he insisted that Luigi's controls were a political statement about nuclear proliferation and Obamacare. Gamers have touted Mario 64's camera as the best in the series, and one of the best 3D game cameras of all time. It always keeps the action focused on Mario, and keeps Mario at the focal point of the action. Now, on to the levels and environments. Mario 64 was the first video game to feature levels, let alone levels with different graphics. Before Mario 64, video games simply featured characters floating in a void, such as Pong or Echo the Dolphin. This game has many different environments, from Brick World to Tall Place to Piranha Plant Land. The reason these levels are so realistic and so resonant with gamers even in today's gamescape is because the levels themselves were based on Miyamoto's very own childhood memories. Miyamoto drew from his experiences of when he explored the insides of clocks, snuck onto a submarine at a secret underwater military base, and when he flew over a rainbow on a carpet as a child in Japan. As Westerners, or Baka Gaijin, as Nipponesians would say, we don't understand these environments, and that's why so many levels in this game clashed with American gamers and their Jewish beliefs. Whether or not you're a fan, like it or not, Mario 64 is definitely one of the games ever made. Mario 64 is such a game, it's no wonder gamers are continuing to game Mario games to this very game. From the classic music to the crazy cast of enemies like Shy Guys, Oompa Loompas, and Gay Bowser, to the groundbreaking experience and materia system, there's something for everyone to love. It's important to look back at the games of old, much like it's important to look back when you take a shit before you flush. So, I hope you enjoyed this nostalgic look into the back of the toilet bowl of gaming history where we saw some real interesting smears. But it's time to say so long, Gay Bowser. Thanks for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a comment. We'll have a comment section for the next video where I'll answer your questions. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. That's the notification bell, don't forget to hit that. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe and comment, and give a like while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.